this is what your question looks like in the test. And following this, there are a number of statements. And for each statement, you have to figure out whether the statement is true or false or not given, or yes or no or not given. In the case of pen and paper IELTS, you need to write the correct answer in your answer sheet. In the case of computer delivered IELTS, you need to choose the correct answer. The questions are in the same order as the text. For all such questions, we need one question at a time figure out its answer, and then move on to the next one. These question types require you to look for minute details in the passage. You're looking for information in case of true, false, not given, and opinions in case of yes, no, not given. So how do you solve these questions? First, read one question. Identify the location keywords. Figuring out the tentative location of the answer in the passage is very important for all the question types which have answers in order. So sometimes it helps to start with maybe the second or third question first if you feel their answers would be easier to locate in the passage. So once you have identified some location keywords, scan the passage. Scanning of the passage means you read quickly while looking for specific information. Once you feel you have a tentative location of the answer in the passage, go back to the question, reread it, understand it thoroughly. Remember the language of the question is usually simpler than the language in the passage. Go back to the passage, read the relevant part. You may need to read two to three sentences to figure out the answer. The information that is there in the question in one sentence could be spread over two to three sentences in the passage. And finally, use synonyms for confirmation. That is, try to find synonyms in the text for as many words in the question as possible to confirm your answer. Follow a straightforward rule in these question types. If every word in the statement is true, your answer is true or yes. If even one word is false, your answer is false or no. If any part of the statement is not mentioned in the text, your answer is not given. Let's try to understand this rule using this example. The question in this case says, other countries had built underground railways before Metropolitan Line opened. And this is the sentence from the passage. The answer is false because in the passage it says, the Metropolitan Line was the world's first underground railway. So no other country had built underground railways before. But if the passage mentions the Metropolitan Line was one of the first underground railways, or it just mentions that the Metropolitan Line opened on this date, the answer would be not given. Because in both these cases, we cannot say for sure whether it was the first one or not. It could have been based on the information given, but we can't be sure. So the information in the passage neither confirms nor contradicts the statement. We can't answer with true or false because we do not have enough information. However, if the passage mentions that it was one of the first underground railways and then another country had inaugurated its underground railway weeks before, the answer would be true because now the passage clearly supports the statement. Let's look at another example. In this case, the question says, overseas candidates can do all their auditions via a digital link. And this is what the passage says. YouTube or link to a secure website essentially means a digital link. So what we know from the passage is that one audition or the first audition can be done via a digital link. The answer, however, is false because of just one word in the question, which is all. The auditions after the first audition will have to be in person at the school. The passage says, if you are successful in your first auditions, you will be invited to attend future auditions here at the school. So which means they cannot be online or via digital link. If I remove this one sentence from the passage, the answer would be not given because in that case, we don't know about the other auditions. We just have information about the first audition and then no information after that. A crucial point to remember is that your answers should be based solely on the information in the text, not on what you know or assume. A simple example is this passage about the solar system. If the question is, 
the earth revolves around the sun? The answer would be not given even though I know that the answer is true because it is based on my knowledge and not on the information provided in the passage. Our second step in solving this question type is identifying location keywords in the questions and finding out the tentative location of the answer in the passage. So you may want to start with the second or third question first if you feel it would be easier to locate. For instance, in these two false not given questions, questions 34 and 35 have more obvious location keywords. They have capitalized words, abbreviations, the word first, so you might find it more efficient to look for the answer to the 34th question first and then search for the answer to question number 33, knowing that it will be before the 34th one in the passage. Let's look at a few examples now. We'll start with the seventh question. The seventh question has a capitalized word metropolitan. So I'll keep metropolitan line in mind as a possible location key phrase. Another word I'll keep in mind is countries. I could find the word country or nation or maybe even name of some countries in the passage. With this in mind, I start scanning the passage. Because the word metropolitan is capitalized, it's very easy to find in the passage. I can see that it is mentioned for the first time in the third paragraph. But there it is the name of a company, Metropolitan Railway Company. The phrase metropolitan line is mentioned for the first time in the beginning of the fifth paragraph. Now that I have a tentative location, I go back and I read the question again, understanding exactly what the question is asking. Other countries had built underground railways before the metropolitan line opened. So if from the passage, I get the information that underground railways had been built in other countries before, the answer would be true. If not, the answer would be false. And if, from the information in the passage, I cannot be sure whether other countries had built underground railways before this or not, the answer would be not given. We get our answer from the very first sentence of the fifth paragraph. The Metropolitan Line was the world's first underground railway. Because it was the first one in the world, obviously no other country had built before. On to the eighth question now. In the eighth question, we again see metropolitan line and first day is mentioned, the number first. In the passage, this is where we had found the seventh answer. In the very next sentence, we see first day. So now I'll read the question carefully. More people than predicted traveled on the metropolitan line on the first day. So from the passage, I have to find out what the prediction was about how many people would travel the first day and how many people did travel. And if the predicted number was lower than the actual number of people who traveled, the answer would be true. In the passage, we have the number of passengers or the number of people who traveled on the first day. That's almost 40,000. What we do not have is any prediction about how many were expected to travel. Because part of the information that is asked in the question is not given, the answer is not given. And on your screen, you can see a list of words and phrases that help us confirm the answer. In the ninth question, there are no capitalized words, there are no numbers, but there are words like ventilation, pollution, tunnels. I'm expecting to find at least some of these words as it is in the passage without any synonyms. So with these words in mind, I start scanning the passage first. Both ventilation shafts and tunnels are mentioned at the end of the next paragraph. So this is where it becomes clear why it is important to get a tentative location of the answer before you start going into the details of exactly what the question says and figuring out what the answer is. So from the first two sentences of the fifth paragraph, I got the answers to the seventh and eighth questions. But then the answer to the ninth one is at the end of the sixth paragraph, the next paragraph. Let's now understand what the question is saying. Ventilation shafts were used. There was pollution in the tunnels. And even after use of ventilation shafts, the pollution remained. Let's read the passage now. This sentence says, however, smoke and fumes remained a problem 
even though ventilation shafts were added to the tunnels. Smoke and fumes means pollution. So the sentence in the passage means ventilation shafts were added to the tunnels, but smoke and fumes or pollution remained a problem. The answer is true. The next question, the 10th question, has a capitalized word London, but it also has a phrase in quotes, cut and cover. Anything that is in quotes in the questions will be found as it is in the passage without any synonyms being used or any change in the order of their words. The answer to the ninth question was in the sixth paragraph. I start scanning the passage after that. I see cut and cover in the seventh paragraph. So the next step, I go back to the question, understand it, read it thoroughly. A different approach from the cut and cover technique was required in London central area. In the passage, I see that center of London and capital center are mentioned in the sentence before the sentence that has cut and cover in it. This is another thing that you need to keep in mind. The information that is there in one sentence in the question could be spread across two to three sentences in the passage. So you may need to read two to three sentences properly, understand them properly to figure out the answer. That's what's happening here. The sentence with the phrase cut and cover says, the cut and cover method of construction was not an option in this part of the capital. The only alternative was to tunnel deep underground. So alternative is a different approach. Cut and cover method is the cut and cover technique. But how do we figure out which part of the capital is being talked about? For that, we have to read the sentence before this one to understand that this is the central part of London that we are talking about. The answer, therefore, is true. I'll be posting a separate video discussing solutions to the rest of these questions. You'll find the link in the description. We approach yes, no, not given questions in a similar manner. For examples, you'll find links to videos with solutions of yes, no, not given questions in the description of this video. Knowing the question types helps you decide which questions to do first and know the right technique for each question type. Basically, it helps you find answers quickly and correctly. Most of the question types have answers in the same order as the information in the text. In case of all of these question types, our target is always to look for location key information in the questions, scan the passage for the location of the answer, then read the question carefully, understand the question and then focus on that part of the passage where we expect the answer to be. Any questions that have answers in the same order, or even those questions which may be slightly out of order but have answers close by, are slightly easier than the other question types. All the different methods of solving these question types that I've recommended in this video are just that, recommendations and suggestions. Obviously, your target is to find the answer. Practice a lot. See what method works the best for you. But certainly, knowing each question type well helps you identify that method for yourself. Most importantly, you need this knowledge of different question types to figure out which question type to do first. And finally, practice is crucial. However, just do not practice one test after another without pausing to understand why you made the mistakes that you did. So do a practice test, correct it, go back and figure out why you made every single mistake and then move on to the next one. Just doing a lot of practice tests one after another may not help you improve your reading score. That's it for now. Hope this helped you. All the very best.